okay. Apologize. So I was saying, we will have two colleagues uh, uh, presenting the PROSA framework and the Agri Survey Program, which is the PowerPoint the presentation planned for yesterday and moved to today. Finally, we will present you the short, the medium, and the long-term expectations. And we will close the meeting with an open discussion where each country will expose uh, the challenges in the data collection and reporting on the 241 and the action plan to overcome them. At least we will have a discussion on this. We are looking forward really to this last part because the listening your experience will help us understanding better the situation and eventually assist you in the data collection and reporting for the 241 indicator. So before officially start with the first presentation, I leave the floor to Aspandiar for a clarification on a couple of questions raised yesterday on the FSA indicator. Aspandiar, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Stefania. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this uh, third and final day of the virtual training on SDG 241. Um, so before we start the day, there were a couple of uh, questions uh, regarding the PS uh, sub-indicator that we have included within the framework of SDG 241. The first question was from, uh, from UAE, I believe, from Mr. Joma, as to if there are some social safety nets in place uh, at the country level, do we still need to uh, basically implement this sub-indicator for us to assess the food security situation? And um, I, I answered that question yesterday, but let me elaborate a bit more. Um, yes, uh, in consistency with the, my response from yesterday, uh, we strongly recommend all countries to report the food, uh, uh, severity of food insecurity situation as for the population is concerned. Um, just to uh, give you a bit of a background, uh, approximately 104 countries are already reporting uh, fierce uh, or food insecurity experience at the at the national level and 55 countries uh, at least are reporting it to FAO in the context of SDG indicator 2.1.2 uh, and these countries include uh, many developed countries uh, let me just exemplify uh, I, I mentioned USA yesterday apart from USA Canada is uh, another country which is regularly uh, producing and um, uh, reporting and monitoring the food insecurity situation at their country level. Apart from that, in, even in GCC countries, um, uh, amongst the, you know, the six countries, um, uh, Saudi Arabia and, uh, and Bahrain are already compiling and reporting on 2.1.2, which is food insecurity experience scale. And plus Kuwait and Oman uh, has reached out to FAO to assess the impact of uh, COVID-19 uh, in terms of uh, food insecurity uh, prevalence in their population. So um, on top of this, I mean, if you have uh, any program in place at the country level or any projects for you to overcome the, uh, the, the food insecurity situation at your country level, then uh, the FIAS indicator helps you a lot in, in terms of uh, you assessing the impact or the effectiveness of those campaigns, projects, and programs. So uh, you assess the food insecurity prior to that project, and then uh, basically you try to, uh, to see as to how effective that particular program was in terms of alleviating or, uh, or minimizing the food insecurity situation uh, at the national level when you do exposed analysis uh, after that project. So that's, uh, th that was just uh, to add to uh, my answer that I gave yesterday. On top of this, uh, there was uh, this another question whereby we were asked as to whether, um, uh, as to, uh, you know, where we can find this Excel tool once we estimate the item parameters and uh, the respondent parameters and the uh, standard errors, et cetera, which are estimated by the RUSH model. Once we plug in the information collected, the eight years question, uh, then uh, how do we estimate the probabilities of uh, moderately and severely food insecure and uh, severely food insecure? So uh, I will leave the link in the chat, chat box as well uh, uh, for, 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 you, for all the participants. 
Um, plus, I'm going to show you now as to where you can find it on the on the dedicated web page for uh, for the for the fiesta indicator. Okay, thank you, Spanjar. We have a question from Mrs. Aliya Almazoki. You have the floor. Uh, Aspanyar, in, re in regards to the um, GCC countries that are having a food insecurity um, plan survey to be done or is already done, I just wanted to inquire, is that um, along with the GCC staff? Because there is a GCC statistics center in charge of raising things to the GCC. I just wanted to confirm that because I did attend something and they were talking about it just so uh, we can kind of try to follow up on that directly for the GCC team. So if you could please just confirm that, that would be great. Exactly. We have been talking to the GCC statistical authority at the GCC level. I mean, the one that you have, and we have been talking to them. We, we have had a meeting with them uh, a little, uh, maybe a few days ago. And yes, so we are in talks with them about uh, about the fierce indicator, and we we did uh, had a meeting with them on uh, on, on on this uh, on this indicator. So I confirm uh, your uh, um, your um, uh, 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 information on, on on in this regard. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, uh, Stefania, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so uh, I will leave this link in the in the chat box as well. Plus, we are going to share this with you uh, today or maybe tomorrow sometime once uh, we send you all the finalized presentations and uh, other material that was presented during this training, along with the recordings, etc. So, for the for the Excel tool that I was talking about, on top of that, I mean, here on this page you can find all the necessary information that you need to know for you to implement, process, and analyze the, the PS uh, information. So the PS basics, then implementing the PS in, in different surveys, and these surveys could be, could be household surveys, these could be agriculture surveys, or these could be, you know, even, even censuses. I mean, like you can integrate these eight questions into your census uh, for you to collect information regarding your food security. Then I was mentioning about this uh, FIES e-learning course, which is uh, already available uh, um, online. Plus, uh, so this is the FIES Excel template that I was talking about. So simply by clicking on this, as you can see, you know, um, it will, uh, the, the Excel template will, will download and it looks something like this. Okay. So once you once you estimate your uh, items uh, item parameters and respondent parameters, your your uh, standard errors and uh, and all other information which is uh, which is required for the for the estimation of the PS indicator, you just plug that information in here, and then you know the model uh, or the Excel tool will help you uh, you know uh, estimate the prevalence of food insecurity at uh, at your national level. Of course, on how to use this table and all that uh, supplementary information is also provided on this website. So feel free to um, you know familiarize uh, yourself uh, with, the, with the with the with the Excel tool. And then you know we have um, we have a template for uh, reporting as well. So um, all the requ requisite information uh, is is already available on on, on this web page. Plus, like say, for example, as I briefly mentioned, if you want to analyze the impact of COVID-19 on the food insecurity, then in this regard, uh, you know, you can always reach out to us uh, using this email address and you will be directed not to SCG241 team, but to our FIES team, uh, which, is, uh, which is working on food and nutrition. And they will be uh, very happy to assist you and support you in, uh, in um, in doing that exercise. So I stop here, Stefania. Okay, perfect. We don't have any other question on this uh, subject. So uh, thank you for all this uh, clarification. Now let's start uh, the training with the first presentation, which is uh, on uh, Faustat. So let me share my screen.
Okay, so we know that this virtual training uh, focuses on the SDG 241, which uh, we know is a very new uh, indicator in a tier two phase. So the data collection is a process that we just started. But FAO, in particular the statistics division, has a very long experience in collecting data. So the analysis carried out based on food and agricultural statistics is a, indeed a pillar of the FAO activities, indeed explicitly mentioned in the first article of its constitution. So we have FAOSTAT for food and agricultural data, FISHTAT for aquaculture and fisheries, and AQUASTAT for water and irrigation. They all englobe established and well-known processes of data collection and reporting mechanism. And indeed, they are part of the organization's mission to improve data collection and dissemination for the development and the fight against hunger and malnutrition. So the focal points for reporting all this data are expert staff in National Statistics Office, Minister of Agriculture, and other relevant agencies, of course, uh, of which some are in attendance, in attendance, uh, attendance today. So within this context, FAO gets regularly national statistics on crops and uh, livestock production, and also environmental and socioeconomic issues that are relevant to the teams of the SDG 241. Looking in details uh, on FAUSTAT, which is the responsibility of our division, so the Statistics Division of FAO, it's a database disseminated on the web. It's based on the open source technology, the software platform called uh, Phoenix, where the data are free and uh, available in all the official UN languages for over 245 countries and territories and covers all FAO regional groupings, groupings from 1961 to the most recent year available. So they are more than a million statistics available online. Uh, we have 15 domains covered in, in FAUSTAT. Uh, you can see the list here, so production, trade, food balance, food security, prices, and so on. Finally, uh, the data are disseminated through web pages, publications, working papers, and statistical uh, yearbooks. You have here at the bottom uh, on this page also the link uh, to the web page of Faustad. I can tell you that approximately we have 160,000 users uh, per month that are accessing uh, the website. So for collecting the data, uh, we dispatch seven questionnaires every year, divided in, uh, uh, by three teams in the statistics division. Uh, we have so our team, the, which is the environmental team, which deals with the land use, the pesticide and the fertilizer questionnaires. We have the production team that deals only with the production questionnaire. And finally, the social and economic team that has is responsible for other three questionnaires, which are the trade, government expenditure, and prices. So environmental team, as I said, it's our team, is of course the one linked to the 241 indicator, since many sub-indicators that we have seen in these days are calculated through data that comes from these uh, three questionnaires that we dispatch annually. Although uh, the uh, primary method of collection is through the questionnaires, I can tell you that some teams also consider external sources, uh, official ones, like for example, the National Statistics Office website, but also other semi-official sources, for example, uh, uh, Oil World for Prices. These are uh, snapshots on uh, how the questionnaires are visualized. So just you can see that they are similar to, to what, what we have dispatched for the uh, 241 indicator. Let me now show you an overview of the focal points for some of the questionnaires in your countries and also the responses uh, got in the last three years. 
So as I did yesterday for the, oh, sorry, oh, for the questionnaires, um, we kindly ask you to have a look and just in case you know one is not anymore the Fogan point, uh, you please let us know. Um, so the first one, so the land use questionnaire, how uh, the data are linked to the 241 indicator. They, uh, so this data uh, collected through these questionnaires, I used especially to calculate the denominator and for the team uh, five, so variation in water availability and team eight for the sub-indicator use of agrobiodiversity biodiversity supportive practice. Uh, the year indicated uh, here in the columns uh, is the year of dispatch of the questionnaire, uh, asking for the data for the previous year. So in the last three years, we have got uh, data from almost all the countries, with the exceptions of Burkina Faso and Malawi, and uh, uh, Kenya, Mali, South Africa, uh, and Uganda. So we kindly ask from uh, uh, these two these countries to inform us uh, uh, on any special issue maybe they, they might have had the, with this questionnaire. And we really hope to receive data from all these countries in the next few weeks. Since uh, the dispatch has been done uh, uh, last week or 10 days ago, and the deadline is set for the, for the end of the month, so for the end of October. Uh, the situation for, for the fertilizer, uh, so fertilizer question is linked to the 241 uh, indicator with the, through the team number six, so for the sub-indicator management of fertilizers. The, this is clearly the question where we lack mostly uh, the data. Uh, in fact, here we have eight countries that didn't send us any data in the last three years. So to mention uh, Armenia, Burkina Faso, Malawi, United Arab Emirates, uh, Kenya, um, Mali, South Africa, and Uganda. So uh, it's important if you can help us, uh, uh, especially for this question, to get maybe the right contact in case they, we have not contacted the good persons. Or as I said, let us know, let us know what are the issues uh, with this data that are, seems they are lacking. Pesticides uh, linked uh, with the team seven, so the sub-indicators manage management of pesticides. Here as well, we have uh, seven countries that didn't provide any data in the last three years. Burkina Faso, Malawi, United Arab Emirates, Kenya, Mali, South Africa, and Uganda again. These three questionnaires just mentioned uh, are the ones, uh, as I said, that, that comes from our team. So our teams are responsible for them. So please, uh, uh, you have this presentation, but we will send uh, all the presentations again, uh, again uh, at the end of today. Uh, if you don't know, you can share these uh, names uh, within your uh, uh, institutions, and you please have a look at the information and inform us on any change. I would say especially for these three questions, because we have discussed uh, uh, this question really a few days ago, so it's important that we have some updated information. About the production, uh, is probably always the question which uh, the data in, as a contrary, are not missing. Indeed, many data seems available for team one in general, so the output value per hectare and the trim three risk mitigation mechanism. For uh, this question, the next dispatch is planned for uh, May uh, 2021. And in this case, only Uganda didn't provide any data uh, in the last three years. Finally, the prices question is linked again as the production question to team one, so the productivity and team three, resilience. Uh, Burkina Faso, United Arab Emirates, and Kenya and Uganda here didn't provide data in the last three years. Um, let me say again, um, you should have downloaded the, already this presentation. So uh, don't worry, because in case you didn't, we will send uh, uh, again uh, um, this presentation. Uh, 
Um, concluding, uh, when we dispatch the two for one questionnaire, and you need to respond uh, on the 11 sub indicators, you are, you are asked to provide data on the 11 sub indicators. Please remember that uh, the relevant national statistics already reported to FAO through these questionnaires. You will probably find many information on the topics that are relevant uh, uh, to our indicator. So as Canada explained us yesterday, some of the national data could be used uh, uh, for an initial proxy reporting. This proxy approach can be used uh, while, of course, the capacity, capacities to collect and analyze more detailed uh, farm level data improve over time. So, and thus uh, also the reporting on the 241. Finally, I would say that leveraging on existing expertise can be used as a basis to strengthen the national statistics process. And, of course, plan improvements uh, to the national service and the census processes. With this, I have uh, uh, concluded this presentation, but please uh, note that uh, after the thank you slides, there are a couple of extra slides where there are visualized the other uh, focal points for the last two questionnaires that I mean and didn't mention so far because they are not linked to the two for one, but of course they are still important for the statistics division of FAO. So I'm talking about the government expenditure and the trade ones. So please concentrate uh, especially on the government expenditure one, since uh, it's the one where we miss more data, more data. So especially for Burkina, Malawi, Kyrgyzstan, Mali, and Uganda. And for these uh, two questionnaires, uh, the next uh, dispatch will be uh, no sorry for this for the government pension with the dispatch will be done in May 21 while for the trade one um, it's uh, uh, in February 21 so thank you very much uh, I don't know if there are any questions because I didn't have the chat open uh, let me see Okay, no, it's a Spaniard that sent the link. So um, we don't have any comments. Um, I think we can now move to the next presentation then. Let me stop sharing my screen. Uh, let me check if our colleague is online. Yes, he's online. So um, next presentation is an introduction to the uh, additional mechanism to measure, to measure and monitor sustainable agriculture, which is the PROSA uh, framework. So Nathan Warren is a statistician in the environmental statistics teams, team who has worked uh, on PROSA, uh, PROSA. He has worked in the areas of food security statistics and food balance sheets in our division. And he has also worked for two years as a statistician uh, at OECD. Nathan, you have the floor. Uh, we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay, yes. Okay, and can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So thank you for the introduction, Stefania. Yes, my name is Nathan Warner, and I'm working on the same team as Asfandiar and Stefania for environmental statistics. Thank you to both of them and also for the participants uh, for the time dedicated to allow me to present some work that we've been doing, doing in collaboration with another division of the Food and Agriculture Organization, which is the Agrofood Economics Division, for a report called The Progress Towards Sustainable Agriculture. So I'll, I'll give an overview and some, uh, some key results of the presentation. It's important to note that this, this report has gone through both internal and external peer review, but is not yet published. 
So the background for the uh, Progress Towards Sustainable Agriculture report is that we are analyzing um, four different food systems typologies that are grouped in terms of uh, modern food systems, traditional food systems, land intensive mixed food systems, and capital intensive mixed food systems. These groupings uh, were done with a principal components analysis for those who are more interested in the statistical component of uh, factor productivities. And these groupings overlap well uh, with other groupings that have been done and those defined in the 2017 high level panel of experts on food security and nutrition. So the traditional food systems typology are those characterized by both low and land labor productivities as well as low capital stocks. Land intensive mixed food systems are those characterized by higher uh, productivities mainly due to larger land areas available to the agricultural active population. The capital intensive mixed food systems typologies are characterized by higher land productivity mainly due to more extensive use of agricultural inputs and agricultural value added due to uh, capital endowment per worker. The, the modern food systems are also capital intensive with high levels of inputs and high labor or uh, land productivities due to uh, factors such as high levels of, me of mechanization and access to modern technologies. In these, uh, in these food system typology, uh, agriculture is highly competitive, which creates a strong agricultural export market. So again, these, these four food system typologies were, were done using the, the principal components analysis. And, and the, the traditional food system typology is the one that belongs to the first quartile where for the mixed food systems, the second and third quartiles were split between the, a, a land to capital ratio. And the, the modern food systems are those that belong to the, the highest quartile of the principal components analysis. In terms of the coverage, um, the report focuses on a set of 16 indicators. It's important to note that one of the main differences of this report is that we're, we're always dealing with national level statistics and the data is exclusively used from FAUSTAT with the exception of one of the indicators that I'll show in the next slide that comes uh, from Aquastat. But these are all national level statistics, so they're not, they're not farm level. And this is one of the, the main differences between um, the, the analysis that is done here versus the, the indicators for 2.4.1. Um, the, the coverage in terms of time is for most of the indicators dating back to 1961. It, with exceptions for a couple of indicators such as the prevalence of undernourishment and also pesticides use, which have time series starting from the 1990s. So as I mentioned, the, the data source is, ex, is exclusively national level statistics of uh, FAUSTAT uh, variables computed at the, at the country level that were then aggregated in terms of these four different food systems typologies. We, for the report, we, we do an analysis of looking at trends between all of the different indicators. And we also implemented a uh, mix of qualitative and quantitative approach with a, with a traffic light approach also for, for the Progress Towards Sustainable Agriculture report. Um, 
one of the main differences between the traffic light approach that we implemented here is that as we are exclusively looking at progress over time, the classifications in terms of traffic light categories, which also here are, are red, yellow, and green, are exclusively looking at changes over time. So there, while there are some, some thresholds that we had to, that we did implement for a few specific indicators, those gains and differences are still looking at movement or towards uh, movement towards or away from those physical thresholds. So in in general, the 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 gains uh, over two successive time periods are classified as uh, yellow. If they're maintained for a second time period, they are classified as green and decreases over any two successive uh, periods are classified as red. So the last thing that to mention for regarding the scope is that the, the, the scope is in terms of the, the crop and livestock production systems. So one more thing to mention on the, the traffic lights. So this qualitative mix of qualitative and quantitative approach that we implemented for the traffic lights allowed us to identify sustainability hotspots for each of these different food systems typologies by identifying those areas that are most in need of improvement for the, the different food systems typologies. So I'd like to now go and have a closer look at the, the indicators. So I won't go through all of them uh, one by one, but you'll notice some uh, strong similarities between the indicators, sub indicators that are presented here, um, as well as the dimensions with uh, 2.4.1. So it should be mentioned that while this is a, a, a standalone process looking at national uh, available data, these indicators were originally chosen with the 2.41 uh, framework in mind. So we have the dimensions broken down in terms of economic, social, and environment with uh, the different indicators listed here and a couple of additional indicators that were added to look at emissions and land use change. So to jump straight to uh, the results, so I'd like here to focus on some of the more important um, results that are, are across all of the different food systems typologies. So these national level statistics uh, across all of these sub indicators allows for a first order and complete analysis of progress towards sustainability in both qualitative and quantitative ways, looking at the time trends and these, the traffic light approach that was implemented. So if we look at the social economic dimension, we, we note that across all of the different food systems typologies, progress has been strong, but gross output specialization tends to be the, the representing the most limiting factor. In terms of land use, agricultural land expansion is occurring at the detriment of natural ecosystems, especially for forest and crop and livestock biodiversity. We've noticed that so in the analysis that was done for the report, I mean, the, the, the biodiversity for crops and livestock is key to resilience. However, in moving from traditional to modern food systems, it does not always co coincide with the market resilience, which is the indicator that looks at the gross, gross output specialization. So 
if I, in general, the analysis that was done is done by looking at the indicators separately. At the same time, we, we do in the report draw some, um, we look at some of the indicators together to try and look at the different dimensions. So for, for biodiversity, for example, we've seen that the, these lower levels of diversification along with moderate levels of gross output specialization, these tend to have or expose countries to much more to climate risk. Another one of the, the, for the soil and nutrient balance, as well as chemical pesticides, these uh, remain a significant limiting, limiting factor to agricultural sustainability in all of the food systems typologies. And this is at both high levels and low levels of inputs. So at high levels of inputs, the countries that are applying too much, pesti too much pesticides or too much fertilizers um, need to reduce the, the application that they're applying, whereas there are countries, especially in the traditional food systems typology, that still do not have access to the agricultural inputs that they need to increase their productivity. And so also for lower levels of pesticides or fertilizer use, these can be a limiting factor. So I'll also touch on the analysis that was done by our colleagues in the, another division, the Agri-Food Economics Division, that focused on the, the, the drivers of sustainable agriculture. So to, to look at the, the five steps of the, the combined assessment that was done for the report, these were broken down in terms of First, a, a, an extensive literature review, and then the identification of the quantitative indicators, again, keeping in mind the 2.41 framework. The drivers that were selected to be analyzed were, were selected based on a statistical method known as LASSO. So, the lasso is the least absolute shrinkage and selection operator for those who are more interested in the statistical uh, component of the report. And this is a variable selection method that performs both variable selection and regular, regularization uh, in order to enhance the prediction accuracy and interpret, interpretability of the statistical model that it produces. So after all of this, including the, the lasso analysis, the final selection of the driver and sub indicator relationships uh, were looked at and they were broken down in terms of these four different key global drivers, which are demographic dynamics, inequality, farm size structure, global integration of agriculture, where th things are looked at such as foreign direct investment and agricultural exports and government support to agriculture. So one of the, the key things that I would, I would uh, highlight in terms of the analysis that was done for the drivers is, that is kind of covers all, across all of the themes, but especially government support is that it, it it is one of the most important and direct mechanisms that are available to policymakers to encourage sustainable agricultural development. So that's an overview of the report. Um, I'd also maybe like to share with you from directly from the report one of the how how the traffic light analysis is presented so as i mentioned um, the traffic light methods that are applied for the report are ex extensively looking at progress over time and 
it allowed us to identify these sustainability hotspots for each of the different food systems topologies. So in terms of the capital intensive food systems, for example, that are the food systems topology that are characterized by higher levels of agricultural inputs, we can see, for example, that fertilizers and pesticides remain one of the key limiting factors towards uh, for um, obtaining sustainable agriculture in this food systems topology. And when the report becomes available, uh, you can see the, the different uh, hot sustainability hotspots that are identified for the other food systems topologies. Um, in terms of the, the, the driver analysis, so I'd like maybe just to touch on the the analysis that was done in terms of the looking at the indicators and the drivers of change. So I mentioned in the uh, last slide that government support to agriculture uh, is one of the most important mechanisms that is available to countries to promote sustainable agriculture. And we can see these strong uh, positive relationships in terms of progress for government assistance to agricultural outputs for each of, for, for several of these different sub indicators. And as opposed to government support to agricultural inputs where there is a, a strong movement against sustainability. Um, so that's an overview of the report. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Again, as I uh, mentioned in the first slide, the, the report should become available soon. It's already gone through internal and external peer review. And, but um, to highlight that this is a separate process from, <laughs> maybe you guys can see my, my message from our Bob who's, uh, who's uh, asking me to, uh, to highlight and right, readily so that this is a, a separate process from um, the 2.4.1 uh, process and looking at national, uh, nationally available data, but still trying to, to draw some, some preliminary results in terms, uh, in terms of progress towards sustainable agriculture. So uh, let me see if I can go back to... So, I mean, that's, uh, that's the, the uh, presentation of the report and I'm, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for right now and see if there are any questions so I can also go to the, the chat box. We don't have any questions so far. <clears throat> So let's wait some seconds in case someone is thinking about it. Okay, seems uh, we don't have any question. Uh, okay, if there are any questions that, that arise, of course, I mean, they, they will be communicated to Stefania and Svandiar, no, and I, I'd be happy to follow up with, uh, with any questions that, that may arise. Exactly, exactly. So thank you very much, Nathan. And uh, yes, if the participant will have a question later, we will contact you. We will, be, we will put them in touch with you. So thank, thank you. you again, thank you. Thank you all for your time. Okay, well, uh, we are then uh, ready for the next presentation, which is done by Flavio Bolliger, a colleague uh, of us in the Statistics Division. He will be presenting the uh, SDG 241 indicator in the context of the Agri-Survey Program and the 50 by 2030 initiative. Flavio has a degree in agronomy and another one in economy. He was the coordinator of agriculture uh, of the Brazilian Institute of Geographic and Statistics from 2003 to 2015. 
Uh, at FAO, he contributed to the implementation of the global strategy to improve uh, agriculture and rural statistics as the research coordinator. And since uh, 2018, he acts as the technical coordinator in the survey team in the statistics division of FAO. He has experience in the economy, focusing on socioeconomic statistics, acting on agricultural statistics, agribusiness, economic statistics, and sustainable, sustainable development. Flavio, you have the floor. You want that I share your presentation? Hi, good morning. Um, I, I, I can try to share, to share okay. the, my, by myself. Let's see. Um, you have the share button. Yeah, I did it. Not yet. Okay, starting. Great, you managed. Okay, sorry, uh, yours, Fabio. So it's working, no? Yes, okay. perfectly. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, the organization, for this presentation. Um, the idea is to, to talk a bit about the instruments that FAO has promoting to complete the um, different SDGs linked to uh, agricultural survey, in particular the agri-survey program and the FIP by touch initiative. So I, I will cover a bit about the project it's managed by agri-survey program. Uh, the AGS methodology and the, how the indicator 241 is integrated with it, and uh, uh, similar for FIP by touch initiative. Uh, but in this case, it uh, included uh, some information about country onboarding. Um, okay, uh, as you know, uh, FAO for many, many years from since the 50s, last, last year, last century, uh, <clears throat> promoting and supporting countries on implementing uh, census. Um, some initiatives was done in the 80s on methodology for continual survey, annual data on production, uh, things like that. But in fact, uh, um, in around 2008, with this crisis of prices on agriculture, was um, uh, evaluation about agriculture statistics in the world um, shows that uh, the availability of um, data was not so um, not enough, or the decline the the, the quantity the quality of agricultural statistics uh, around the world. And uh, an initiative um, um, for many institutions uh, established a, pro a, pro a project named Global Strategy for Improving Agricultural Statistics. This um, initiative um, developed uh, update methodologies for agricultural statistics and develop a series of handbooks. Uh, and one of the main, most important handbooks is about uh, uh, agricultural survey implementation. Uh, named AGRIS was the name done by this initiative, they had this handbook, Agricultural Integrated Survey. Integrated because uh, the proposal goes beyond the traditional agricultural statistics. Uh, looking for uh, economic, social, and environmental aspects of, of the agriculture also. And um, two or three years ago, uh, the Statistics Division established this um, survey team, a new branch in the Statistics Division of FAO, uh, running this agri-survey program. And the idea is to support country on improving or, or implementing agricultural surveys um, to improve the availability of uh, basic and uh, agricultural statistics. 
Uh, nowadays, this agri-survey program has uh, are running three projects. Uh, one is USAID pro funded by USAID, uh, bringing technical assistance and financial support for three countries, Cambodia, Senegal, and Uganda. A Gates project uh, promoting uh, uh, technical assistance uh, for other countries, namely uh, Armenia, Ecuador, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Nepal, and Uruguay. And uh, a, a very um, new uh, initiative uh, program, a project, is the Fifth by Thirty initiative that started this year, or 2019, and goes to 2030. This is a more strong or more complete and sophisticated project, um, a larger one, also pro providing technical assistance and financial support in many aspects on the production of agricultural statistics. The Agri-Survey Program also uh, do support to countries from other resources, national resources, and this technical cooperation program that are FAO resources funding also uh, some support to, uh, to, 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 to support countries. Uh, well, the, uh, as I mentioned, the AGRIS survey methodology was developed by the Global Strategy. You can see uh, the links for, for Global Strategy for, for the AGRIS handbook and all the materials uh, uh, how to implement the, the survey. And, and the proposal is uh, a, a multi-purpose and modular survey uh, in a cycle of 10 years uh, that has this core model that is uh, co uh, data collected every year and some uh, thematic models, rotating models that, is, uh, uh, that collect data uh, with less uh, um, frequency um, and the, the, we are you can see in the screen uh, the standard proposal in terms of frequency for different aspects economy labor method production method environment and machinery all this um, proposal and, and the handbook uh, was finalized in the beginning of 2018 so it's important to highlight that in that time, the requirements for the indicator 241 was not established yet. Uh, the approval of this methodology for 241 happened later. And then the proposal of, for AGIS, as it is in the handbook, do not include all requirements for the 241 uh, indicator. Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, I've already mentioned uh, different documents developed to, to, to come up with this issue. In fact, we developed two options in terms of uh, collecting data for 241 using AGRIS methodology. The option one is to attach to the core model uh, a set of questions, in fact, uh, uh, 32 additional questions in order to uh, collect all requirements for the 241. So in this sense, attached to the core, uh, the 11 sub-indicators could be uh, collected in the same year and released in the same year. The other uh, alternative is to um, link uh, the requirement to form uh, to different rotating models. In this case, because in this case, uh, um, in fact, these rotating models form a part of the requirements. So uh, you need less additional questions to cover all the requirements. Um, but in this case, if you're going in, the, in, the, in a year with the economic model, in another year with the agrivertical model, uh, 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 the, the sub-indicators 
the reference here for the subjugation will be uh, different for different um, indicators. I, I will ask you to wait a minute because I should put uh, my cable in the computer. With the lack, 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 lack of battery. A minute, please. Okay. Um, well, uh, the initiative is a partnership with different institutions, um, and the idea is more or less the same to improve the capacity of the countries and promote the production of uh, good statistics, but have a, a special focus on the SDGs, uh, including the 241. To help countries. Uh, you can see here the link for the fifth by 30 initiative um, where you can find more information. Uh, the, um, the onboarding process already started. In fact, um, we start with the inception contact with Cambodia, Uganda, and Ethiopia already. So in 2021, uh, some pre-approved countries that are countries that were working before uh, FAO and the World Bank, um, and two new, new countries in 2021. In 2022, another six pre-approved countries and more five new countries. In 2023, um, six new countries. So the, the, the idea is to cover 50 countries uh, up to uh, 2013. So that's uh, the the aim of the project. Uh, and, and as I explained before, the project is covering not only technical system but also helping countries on funding uh, data collection. Uh, it's important to stress that um, the project is devoted to middle, low, and low-income countries. And, The approach for fee by 30 is similar to, to AGRIS uh, with a core model and a rotating model, but in this case, uh, it was organized with a cycle of three years, uh, including um, one model more on economics, this income, labor, and productivity, uh, the model on production methods, environment, and machinery. And this uh, uh, 3x30, um, we have two programs. One named Agriculture Survey Program uh, that uh, will cover all agricultural holdings, the non household sector and the household sector, and uh, with focus on agricultural statistics. A second program. Uh, uh, Non-farm household in the rural, rural area are included in the target population, and uh, additional model uh, on life standard is applied. It's a more uh, uh, to to uh, the goal is to to achieve some savings in terms of implementing uh, also 
uh, rural uh, information, rural developed information in the same system. Uh, in the two cases, um, the requirements for two for ones are, is already incorporated to the tools. So, uh, in particular, the year for the production methods environment. So, the idea in the cycle is that year produce all the requirements for two for one. So, uh, as this method uh, tools are developed in last year, so all requirements is already there. And the tools are available in their website. Uh, if, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in the case of 241, we have some variations of the tools. Uh, um, uh, a questionnaire for household sector, uh, adapt questionnaire for non-household sector, questionnaire when you are going just one visit or with two visits, uh, post planting, post harvesting visit, and so these variations are in all these cases, the two for one requirements are included in the PME, the production method environment uh, questionnaire. Well, that's what I have to present uh, have for you and uh, open for any questions. Uh, we have one question, maybe the translators uh, can help us uh, uh, interpret it because it's in Russian. So. Let's wait uh, one second. Flavio, you may want to stop sharing your screen. Yes, yes. Uh, Stefania. Yes. I did uh, manage to translate the question. Okay. Uh, and, uh, so, so the question is as to whether, uh, you know, if a country submit partially completed questionnaire, does FAO plan to independently calculate HCG 241 for that country based on expert judgment and publish this information? So the answer to this question would be no. So we are not going to publish any sub indicator on behalf of the country unless the country provide us with the micro data and then uh, you know for, for that particular sub indicator and then uh, we estimate uh, or support countries in analyzing that information for us to construct that particular sub indicator and once that is done i mean we are going to publish that information in consultation and and, and 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 close agreement with the country so if a country let me put it this way if out of the 11, the country is only able to report on three of the sub indicator out of 11, then uh, we are going to report only on the three sub indicators for that particular for that particular year. So we are not going to report uh, uh, based on expert judgment, uh, any other SDG, uh, any other uh, sub indicator that the country is unable to is unable to uh, calculate. Okay, thank you. Do we have any question for Flavio? Because if not, we can thank him. Okay, I don't think uh, we have question, Flavio. So uh, thank you again, as I said to, to Nathan, anyway, if participants in some cases will contact us with some question for you, we will put you uh, in, co in, in, in contact with them. So thank you uh, a lot. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity and good luck in the work. Okay, thank work. you, Flavio. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So just one more question uh, before Flavio leaves, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe a comment, in fact. So Flavio, you may want to basically uh, mention or highlight as to how country can approach you if they qualify to be low and lower middle income countries and they fulfill the criteria to be one of the 50 countries uh, to be considered for uh, FAO support on uh, 50 by 2030 initiative. So what's the process for that? I mean, if you can briefly explain that to the participants so that they know. Okay. Um, 
Paul, the, the the support is for uh, middle and low, middle low and low income countries according to the the, the criteria of World Bank. Uh, the um, the project is managed by FAO, World Bank, and IFAD. And uh, for for the, for the management of the project, uh, it was established a, a project management team based on on home, in your home. And the, the expression of interest and participation in the project should sent by this project management team. Uh, this is the main uh, limitation, but in general, I, I, I would stress also that the idea is to the countries after some years, uh, it depends on the capacity of the countries, the support can go from five to eight years start with uh, a preparation phase with trainings and then implementation phase uh, the idea is to help the countries to run at least three or four years of the survey and and then the phase out where uh, the idea is that the country has the technical and financial capacity to, to run the, the, the system so uh, so one important aspect is the commitment of the country, uh, not only in terms of uh, providing uh, teams and, and staff to, to, to implement, but also covering in the, in, uh, over time the cost of the survey uh, implementation. I, I will share in the chat uh, the contact information uh, uh, the the manager is Eliza Mohamedou uh, the person who should be contacted but more information can be um, get from this uh, generic email info at fit by 30 org and Flavio just one more uh, reflection mm -hmm. uh, if there are countries which don't qualify to be low and lower middle income countries, but that still want it, want to have some kind of support from FAO uh, in terms of adopting the survey instruments or the program of 50 by 2030, then yeah. in that case, I mean, uh, what kind of support can we provide and to what extent? Yeah, we have already case on that. Uh, Indonesia is this last one that approached us with this intention and uh, others. The country we are supporting in. Uh, in, in this case, uh, the request should be uh, um, presented to to the to the statistical division of FAO, uh, the director Jose Jose, and uh, different possibilities. In some cases, the the country has resources to fund the technical assistance and the data collection. Uh, in other case, uh, FAO can establish a, a technical cooperation program uh, with uh, FAO resources on statistics. Uh, we have some rules for that. No? The technical cooperation program is not so long, so more in general one or two years, not more than that. And and uh, uh, the statistics division is open to support any country, any country member. Uh, the, the only thing that fifth by third research is devoted to the middle, low, and low income uh, countries. But the other country can apply direct to FAO, and we can uh, give the support uh, and the methodology of AGIS or, or fifth by 30 uh, to implement these tools for for SDGs in general and for the statistical agricultural and cultural statistics as well. Okay, thank you. Do you have any other questions, Fabial, for Flavio? No, uh, I, I don't. So now I give the floor again to us, Pandyar, for the last session. Um, this is a special session for us, as I said at the beginning of the today because uh, uh, we would like to really hear your, your voices. Uh, we, would we would like not to use the, the chat anymore, but leaving each country, so each led representative, 
to speak and tell us in a proper way the expectations, the plan, and the specific issues uh, you might have. Uh, we will be asking like a sort of a round table to leave the space to all countries to, to speak. So first, as Van der will have, uh, uh, we present some slides. Uh, I think then, uh, then uh, we can have a break, and then after the break, we 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 have the the, the open discussion. So okay, I see Flavio is uh, again online, so he put his contact uh, address on the chat. So thank you, Flavio. There were no other questions. Uh, so we really thank you a lot for your time. Thank you, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Well, for the interruption, technical interruption I have. Okay. Okay, okay so Aspandiara, you, you have the floor for the last presentation. Thank you, Stefania. Please confirm as to whether you can see my presentation. Yes. Okay, so over the course of last two days, we uh, discuss the conceptual and methodological basis of SCG 241, its data collection instruments and tools and a mechanism for uh, reporting it back to FAO. Uh, this presentation will cover the progress by FAO until so far, our planned future course of action and expectations in terms of countries' readiness to report on the indicator in the short, medium and long term. Our ultimate aim obviously is to maximize country reporting on uh, SDG 241 and thereby gradually classify it as tier one over time. In summary, uh, this presentation will cover the following aspects, uh, the methodological front, the capacity development activities that we have carried out over the course of last three years, uh, uh, country data collection activities, and reporting of the indicator to, to FAO. Towards the end of the presentation, as Stefania mentioned, we will openly discuss the constraints that impede the country's effort to implement the indicator and thereafter its data collection and reporting uh, to FAO and deliberate the means and ways on how uh, we can jointly overcome these constraints. So by now you may have a very good idea that the methodology of 241 is based on the farm survey. Uh, that is used as a main data collection instrument or vehicle uh, to collect information on all the 11 sub-indicators that constitute the framework of 241. Uh, reaching at this stage where the methodology is now has been a long participatory process of discussion with uh, country experts, uh, international organizations, civil society, academia, uh, and uh, several rounds of testings and follow-up technical work on the development of the methodological and support documents. Um, the farm level approach around which the methodology has been developed uh, was approved and endorsed by the IAEG SDG in November 2018. In this respect, uh, three expert group meetings uh, were organized to uh, elaborate the methodology further. Um, we regularly presented a scientific global strategy to improve agriculture and rural statistics. We carried out an online global consultation whereby we sent at different intervals while we were detailing the methodology uh, to all the national statistical offices of the, of the member states of FAO. And we received substantive feedback during that process, which we then uh, reflected in, um, in, in while we were developing the methodology. We also conducted several webinars with the interagency and expert group on sustainable development goals members. Um, for, from the testing perspective, we uh, conducted several rounds of uh, testing. So in this regard, we uh, first desk tested the earlier version of the methodology in Bangladesh, Kyrgyz Republic, Ecuador, Belgium, and Rwanda. Then we conducted cognitive tests of the survey questionnaire that we have developed for SDG 241 that I showed you yesterday. And then we carried out extended field tests of the survey questionnaire in Bangladesh, whereby we selected 420 um, agriculture holdings for, within four districts of Bangladesh, uh, which I was referring to in my presentation uh, 
the day before yesterday and yesterday uh, as part of uh, uh, the results of uh, each sub indicator. Um, and then uh, in turn, we tested the FAO data collection questionnaire that Stefania mentioned and uh, illustrated in detail uh, yesterday uh, in, in 45 countries. Now, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, all the background uh, documents or the support documents have already been finalized and uploaded to FAO SDG portal that I showed you uh, yesterday as well. Um, these documents uh, include uh, the methodological note, the survey questionnaire, the sampling uh, guidance or sampling design, the numerator manual, um, the calculation procedure, the data entry guidance, etc. So um, all the requisite information uh, that is needed for you to um, collect, uh, to prepare for data collection, to data collection, processing, analysis, and final reporting to FAO has already been completed using the farm survey approach. So um, you, can, um, you can easily, easily uh, uh, implement all these, uh, all these um, um, uh, documents. Uh, you know, by, by, by going to the FAO SDG portal. On the capacity development front, more than uh, 50 uh, plus uh, countries have already been trained on the methodology. Uh, these include the presentation at African uh, Commission on Agriculture Statistics in 2017. We also presented at FAO Committee on Agriculture in 2018, and we are supposed to present to the uh, Committee on Agriculture um, uh, next uh, in, in November 2020 as well. So we have a meeting scheduled with them on the progress that we have made until so far on SDG so far. Uh, the methodology was also presented at Brussels briefing in 2019, whereby it was uh, uh, presented to all the European Commission or European Union countries and as well at the International Conference on Agriculture Statistics in India in 2019. We have also conducted bilateral trainings in 2019 for three countries. So um, I was uh, uh, in Bangladesh, uh, Vietnam and Oman for, uh, for, for a week uh, each, at different uh, time periods in 2019, uh, whereby we uh, uh, Train these countries on the uh, uh, on the SDG two for one methodology in in Amplify Bangladesh has already tested the indicator at the at the national level, uh, of which I showed the, you the result. And with Vietnam, for the time being, has just completed the testing exercise, and they are they have entered the data entry and uh, data processing and analysis phase. Uh, we have also trained 10 African countries in 2019 in collaboration with the United Nations Economic Commission uh, on, on, um, for African region um, uh, and, and Ethiopian Ministry of Agriculture. The countries that were trained were Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya, Namibia, Nigeria, Rwanda, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia. Uh, at, as part of this particular training, which was held in 2019, uh, the training was not that extensive because we only had uh, three hours to present the entire uh, methodology of SDG 241, which by now you may have realized that it's a very complex uh, uh, indicator. If not complex, it's a very, um, um, you know, there is a lot of content that needs to be covered as part of the methodology. So uh, that training was more of uh, an, an introductory uh, in nature. Uh, we also uh, trained 17 countries from Asia and North Africa in 2019. I'm not going to go through the list of these countries. Uh, some of uh, those countries uh, are, are, uh, are participating in this, uh, in this uh, virtual training as well. And 18 countries from Asia and Pacific in 2019, which, uh, which included uh, um, um, many countries uh, uh, like Bangladesh, Bhutan, Cam Cambodia, etc. On account of the unexpected outbreak of uh, coronavirus uh, this uh, year, instead of in-person bilateral trainings that uh, we envision um, 
uh, we instead organized virtual trainings for SCG 241. So apart from the from the two other batches uh, that we have trained already, which I spoke about earlier in September, uh, this is the third batch of countries that uh, uh, we are currently providing uh, uh, technical assistance to. Um, so in total, uh, a three days virtual training uh, for group one was organized from 8 to 10 September. Uh, then the second virtual training was organized from 22 to 24 uh, September, whereby 12 countries from, uh, from Latin American region uh, participated in that training. And uh, the current one is the third and the last virtual training for 2020. Um, whereby we are participated um, by uh, participants from, from, from 10 countries. On top of these uh, virtual trainings, we have been focused throughout in 2020 on uh, e-learning courses uh, for SCG 241 that have now been developed uh, and uploaded online. Uh, we, we shared that with you upfront uh, before uh, be, uh, as an invitation to this meeting. You can always go back to these e-learning courses and get uh, from, you know, more acquainted yourself with SCG 241. Uh, we have also translated the key documents, um, which include the methodological note, the FAO uh, data collection questionnaire and FAO survey questionnaire into three UN languages. Arabic, Spanish, uh, and French. And we took advantage of and leveraged uh, our statistics division colleagues, especially the Agris and 50 by 2030 team country missions to raise uh, SDG 241 awareness, confirm information on the national focal points, and assess uh, national data availability. Uh, for 2021, we will. Uh, Hopefully that uh, we will get over with the coronavirus uh, pandemic, which is uh, curtailing our uh, travel to countries. So hopefully the situation will be, will be improved. If not, then we will continue to provide virtual trainings uh, as well as uh, bilateral virtual trainings on SDG 241 if there are some countries which are, which are more interested in terms of uh, implementing or testing or you know uh, uh, data analysis of the of the information that is already available at the country level vis-a-vis -vis the 11 sub indicator of SCG241. Our plan also is to translate all the remaining support documents including the e-learning uh, uh, course in all uh, six official UN languages including uh, including uh, Russian uh, uh, and, uh, and and Chinese. We also plan to develop digital lectures on SCG 241. Um, so hopefully once these digital lectures will be developed, these will be posted online. And th there we will go into more details in terms of once the information is collected, how do you then uh, process that information each step of the way for you to be able to construct uh, the 11 sub indicator and finally report the dashboard and the aggregate uh, SDG 241. On the data collection front, the FAO data collection questionnaire and reporting protocols have already been developed, um, which briefly, uh, which we covered as part of the presentation presented by Stefania yesterday. Um, and the following uh, activities have already been accomplished, uh, uh, while others are still planned uh, for the remaining uh, time in 2020. So from December 2019 to April 2020, we uh, sent uh, this questionnaire uh, to 45 countries uh, to test it uh, from, uh, from the content structure and flow perspective. Um, from in August 2020, Stefania already mentioned that, uh, we carried out a comprehensive global dispatch that was sent to all uh, member states of uh, FAO. From September to November, soon after, you know, once we are done with these uh, virtual trainings, um, we have already started receiving quite a few replies from, uh, from our member states in reaction to our dispatch. 
So we will start an analysis, gap filling, quality assessment, and quality control processes. So um, if your country is one of the uh, of the several which are yet to get back to us uh, in reaction to our comprehensive dispatch in August, we would strongly urge you to kindly do so in the next uh, uh, couple of weeks. Uh, in this respect, the countries which are from which these replies are still pending, we are going to be sending our first reminder hopefully tomorrow. So uh, in December 2020, uh, we uh, plan to draft analysis and uh, finalizing uh, all the information for United Nations Statistics Division reporting. Um, now, the, uh, the actual reporting of SCG 241 is due for 2022 um, uh, and will be conditional on sufficient data being reported by countries to, to prepare storylines and uh, construct uh, uh, and to construct global and regional aggregates and, uh, and trends. For 2021 uh, data collection cycle, we have the following recurrent activities uh, already planned. From January to Jul July 2021, uh, we will, uh, of course, uh, embark on preparation of uh, the next dispatch for sending it to countries. From July to November, again, we will be conducting the data collection analysis, gap filling, quality control, and quality assessment processes. And December 2021, we will uh, then have draft analysis and finalization for uh, UNSD reporting, which is due for, for early 2022. As presented yesterday by Stefania, the low response rates to the 2019 SCG 241 pilot dispatch were both expected and indicative showing in general the complexity of the indicators methodology and lack of sufficient and relevant data required to report data on the indicator. Um, this was obvious uh, because the indicator is brand new and as mentioned that in context of 241 we are not only uh, interested in reporting trends but we are making sustainability assessments to classify the farms and uh, its agriculture area, green, yellow, and red status using the traffic light approach. And for us to use the traffic light approach, we need to have some questions added to the uh, current agriculture survey system of the country for them to be able to make these, uh, uh, to, to, to basically uh, in place these uh, sustainability criteria and then come up with the, with the, with the traffic light approach. So in the short run, uh, with, in the very short run, in fact, for, for 2020, 2020 and 2021, we expect that several countries will only be able to report on the partial dashboard of SDG 241 based on the, based on the current farm level data approach. So as I, as I was mentioning earlier, even if your country is able to report on one sub-indicator or maybe two or maybe three, um, even that is a good starting point because that will give us an idea as to where you stand in terms of uh, in terms of uh, data availability, uh, capacity, um, uh, and other aspects, uh, and in terms of resources as well, for you to report on SG two for one. So this will at least give us an idea, and then we can engage with you bilaterally on how to bridge the data availability gap or the capacity gap or you know the the resources gap uh, so it will help us pinpoint all those issues in the medium to long term um, however in addition to existence uh, existing farm survey based methodology um, we have initiated a work program to explore the possibility of developing a solution based on alternative data sources for selected sub indicators primarily in the environmental dimension and some in the social dimension as well which in combination and complementarity with farm survey will facilitate countries uh, reporting on SCG 241. In parallel um, outreach and capacity development activities will continue in close coordination with the with Agris and the 50 by 2030 initiative and other potential external partners in support of uh, detailed farm level data for SG241 reporting. 
just to highlight here, I mean, the Japanese Ministry of Agriculture has um, basically approved a project for three countries in Asia, whereby they are currently supporting uh, three countries uh, uh, to, to uh, adopt, uh, implement, and report on SDG 241. Apart from that, we are going to be bilaterally supporting, like I mentioned, Vietnam, uh, whom we have been working with since last year, Bangladesh, uh, who was part of the testing exercise, um, and uh, with Tamor Lest, uh, for which we have already approved a project, and we are going to be working with them very closely through, through our uh, regional office in, in, in Asia to sub help them sub, uh, you know, uh, test the indicator at the country level and then help them produce data and report it to, report it to FAO. Apart from that, sub, several countries, uh, you know, in the, in, as part of the previous virtual training um, for the Latin American region, many of them express interest, uh, you know, in terms of testing SCG 241 and, um, and in terms of implementing and reporting it back to FAO. So as uh, highlighted yesterday, the methodological note of SG241 discusses the possibility of using a combination of different data sources as an alternative option uh, for countries that wishes to do so. And we saw the example of, uh, of Canada. So if you have robust agriculture statistical, other agriculture statistical system, like say, for example, administrative data or agriculture or livestock census, or you, if you have more environmental monitoring system uh, or a geographical information system that is remote sensing or household survey or any other ad hoc or dipstick studies, which you believe respond to the criteria of SCG 241 and uh, can, based on these uh, sources, you can assign sustainability statuses, then uh, you, know, you feel free to use those, uh, uh, those other uh, additional data sources. For, for reporting on 241. So for the time being, as, as you can see in the matrix, agriculture for the agriculture survey, uh, all the sub indicators uh, for the time being, the way the methodology is designed, uh, uh, agriculture survey can be uh, one unique data collection source for, for, for you to collect information on the 11 sub indicators. Now, the exclusive report of 241 may seem intuitive and cost effective. However, both technically and operationally, it is not as straightforward and involves several challenges that needs to be addressed before its use. Having said that, alternative data sources can certainly complement the farm survey data, both uh, pre and post uh, um, uh, its collection. Um, in general, the alternative data sources vary widely both within and across countries in terms of its organization, robustness, richness, uh, quality, scope, and availability. Just to give you some perspective, the alternative data sources uh, usually have uh, different objectives, scale of assessment, scope, and definition, and hence it becomes problematic because uh, the moment you start uh, using alternative data sources, you are from the, from the national and international standards and the, the, the scope and hence it, it becomes very problematic uh, in terms of uh, international, uh, international com comparability of, uh, of different countries. Plus uh, alternative data sources have different temporal resolutions and uh, periodicity of the data set. As I was mentioning, as we, we would like countries to report SDG 241 every three years. And there are many sources which are not updated or, or, or uh, not updated regularly at a predetermined frequency at a country level. And hence, hence uh, the usage of alternative data sources from that perspective becomes uh, a bit of a challenge. There are also sampling issues. There, is, there are differences in design, size, under and or non-coverage of agriculture holdings. So to, to go back to my uh, uh, yesterday uh, reflections, uh, if there is a household survey which, in, which has information 
collected for the HPS questions, but if the agriculture holdings within that sample is not adequately reflected, or if it is not big enough for it to be nationally representative, then we cannot use that information uh, for, uh, for reporting on SDG 241. Uh, likewise, uh, different alternative data sources may have different unit of uh, measurement as uh, time and again, we have been uh, saying that uh, SDG 241, for us, the, um, the unit of observation and the unit of uh, measurement is uh, agriculture holding and the agriculture land area that it owns, manages and operates. So if the particular uh, or alternative data source has another unit of measurement, how do you then associate that with agricultural land area and hence it becomes problematic. Um, adjusting and harmonizing different baselines across different countries for the same source or different baselines for different sources within the same country. So it's, it's another issue which needs to be taken into account before, uh, before using uh, alternative data sources. Um, and lastly, combining or integrating data from different data sources is typically complicated and challenging due to lack of efficient and adequate mechanism for inter or uh, intra-institutional coordination at the, at the national level. So if you are using one unified single farm survey approach, all the information is controlled and managed by one single institution, which usually is the National Statistical Office, Offices um, or maybe Ministry of Agriculture. But the moment you um, uh, broaden the, the data collection sources, if like say, for example, some information is coming from the Ministry of Environment, other is coming from the Ministry of Agriculture, yet some information is coming from some specialized institution that is responsible for uh, geographical information system, et cetera, then uh, you, know, you need to make sure that uh, there is a sufficient coherent coordination amongst all these institutions so that you can uh, report uh, the indicator without uh, uh, any problem in a streamlined way. So what I just discussed, this means that several aspects needs to be carefully considered prior, prior to using alternative data sources in order to produce uh, consistent and reliable data and uh, set the threshold as per the recommended periodicity of the indicator. So before using alternative data sources, it is advised that the use of uh, these and the available set fulfill the following criteria. So I, I mentioned this yesterday too, and uh, I'm re-highlighting this again, uh, because this is very important. So first of all, it should be demonstrated that alternative data sources give at least the same result um, as, as the farm surveys. Um, it can be reflected in or attributed to agricultural land area in the country, considering the different farm typologies and agricultural uh, regions that uh, that we, we uh, that I described to you yesterday. It can be associated with the country agriculture production system, particularly crop, livestock, and the combination in between. So usually the problem is that some alternative data sources are primarily focused on either on crops and, or, or there are studies which are or service focused only on livestock, but there are none which focus on on the uh, on 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 uh, on both combined so so this needs to be um, uh, carefully uh, you know looked into account um, it should capture the same aspect pheno or phenomena as proposed by the farm survey as described in the sub indicator metadata sheets um, the alternative data sources should be representative of the situation at the national level with respect to agricultural land area, taking into account main agriculture region and types. Usually the case is, uh, and this was the case in India, they, they mentioned to us that we would like to use alternative data sources for, for, for some of the environmental sub-indicator. And then, and then once we engage with them and when, once we ask them, okay, fine, what is your source of information? What is the coverage of that particular source? And the problem was that India has uh, approximately, I, I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 24 different states. 
and that alternative inf data source information was available only for two or three states. So if it is not nationally representative, then you know we cannot really use it for SCG two four one monitoring. Um, another important point is that alternative data sources should be compliant with uh, international and national standards and classification system in order to ensure the indi indicator can be uh, internationally comparable. Again, this is a point that I'm highlighting over and over again, but this is very important. If the information by a country is compiled using different uh, different um, standards or classification systems, then we cannot really uh, compare countries uh, both uh, both vis-a-vis -vis each other and across time. Um, then the data should be available at the same level of territorial disaggregation as, as, as the farm survey. And by this, I mean to say that basically the certification variable that we, we mentioned that is crop livestock mixed and the household non-household and irrigated non-irrigated, especially for some of the economic uh, sub-indicators are very important, particularly in case of uh, productivity where we want to compare uh, uh, likes uh, with likes. And then lastly, the data collection here and periodicity are homogeneous across all the sub-indicators. So if there are alternative data sources, which were, uh, you know, um, for which the information is available only for 2010, then, you know, it becomes a problem as to how, based on such dated information, you can say something about sustainability in 2020 or 2021. So, of course, there are techniques and ways and means on, 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 on doing so by using interpolation, extrapolation, growth rates, etc. But, uh, you know, uh, it will be um, it will defeat the sole purpose of uh, you analyzing the real sustainability that is prevailing now in the agriculture sector of the country. So it is always advisable to to have all the sub indicators uh, using the same um, the same um, year and at least the same periodicity. Uh, finally, using different sources implies that mechanism should be put in place at the country level again to coordinate the streamlined flow of required information generated by various institutions to report on SCG241. Um, as was uh, in the presentation yesterday, alternative data sources can be used to complement farm survey data, whereby countries can replace the uh, farm survey question when alternative data sources of information are available and respond to the criteria. It can complement farm survey question by providing additional contextual information uh, helpful to probe the right answers um, um, to the questions that are posed to the, to the holder. This can be done exempt or during the data collection by providing contextual information to the enumerators or the surveyors before going to the field. And it can also be used to cross-check the farm survey results to identify any inconsistencies and to ensure its robustness. Um, uh, this exposed information uh, can be used to triangulate and validate the survey data after the data collection and analysis has been completed. Um, as highlighted earlier, we will soon kickstart the, we, we have in fact already uh, it started the work on developing practical guidance on how alternative data sources can be used for SCG 241 for its measurement and monitoring. As a first step between October and December 2020, we will work on exploring the potential uh, use of earth observation or remote uh, sensing for reporting on selected sub-indicator of SCG 241, primarily in the environmental dimension. We also have a plan to expand this effort in January and March 2021 to include other data sources for reporting on selected sub-indicators of uh, 241, especially in the social uh, uh, dimension. Uh, during the same period, we will, uh, we with the help of experts will draft test protocols or field test protocols as we call it uh, more technically and select countries for testing the approach developed using the remote sensing data vis-a-vis -vis the farm survey approach. 
uh, in April to June 2021, we will execute or carry out actual tests and data analysis for triangulating the, the farm survey and earth observation data. From July to August, we will then draft guidelines on how remote sensing or earth observation or GIS data and other sources of information can be used to report on SG241. From October to December 2021, we will finalize the guidelines and then disseminate it to countries uh, for, uh, for its implementation and, uh, and use. So, Stefania, I, I, I stop here. Um, if there are any questions, I will. Yes, take there those. is a question. Uh, so, if you are in the English channel, uh, maybe the translators can translate the question for us. So for the time being, the way the biodiversity indicator is addressed, um, I mean, the way the criteria are designed, again, uh, the farm survey is a unique data collection tool to collect information on, 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 on all these, uh, on the different criteria, uh, which are selected as part of the biodiversity. For the time being, for biodiversity, the information that we have received from countries now is they are using a proxy of organic agriculture. So, um, which we, which I mentioned earlier, we are not gonna report SG241 using proxies, okay? We are gonna report SG241 using, um, using the actual information that is either collected through farm survey or which will be collected, uh, you know, once we develop this uh, um, uh, um, option for us to use the alternative data sources. So I'm afraid I don't have any any answer for you uh, up until so far in terms of uh, uh, you know as to what other alternative data sources are, con are currently countries reporting for uh, the biodiversity sub indicator. Okay, we have another question from uh, um, Russia, Mr. Uh, Trifonov. Another general question regarding the legal aspect. Could you clarify in brief who determines or endorses the list of sub-indicators for these or other SDG indicators and necessity of using the specific sub-indicators? Is this the uh, inter-IGCI expert group on SDG or any UN bodies and organization, AG, FAO for 241? What is the procedures for endorsement of them? Okay. So the procedure for endorsement, I explained that as part of my first presentation on the very first day. So United Nations Statistical Commission constituted this group, which was called Interagency Expert Group on Sustainable Development Goals. Okay, and this this group uh, com composed comprises of twenty eight member states. And I believe Russian Federation is, is one of the member of this group, if I'm not mistaken, we can check and, uh, you know, um, I can, uh, Stefania, in the meanwhile, if you can check yeah, the membership. Yeah, I'm checking, I'm checking. Yeah. So, so this group was constituted, I mean, initially, once for, I'm not talking about the FAO 21 SDGs or uh, SDG 241, but more gen generally, when this group started working back in 2015-16, then, then all the 231 SDG indicators were classified into three tiers. Tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier one being those for which methodology is established and data is regularly reported by the countries. Tier two being those for which methodology has been established or developed and um, and uh, but no data collection currently exists at a country level and tier three being those for which neither the methodology nor the data exist so they adopted this process then you know as part of the methodological development process they assigned it to the relevant custodian un agencies 
So FAO was made custodian of 21 SDG indicators, including 241. Now, as we started developing the, the as logical basis as you do for one, it was not that FAO was working in isolation uh, on, on the methodology and then it, it was prescribing it to countries. No, the, the, the approach that we took and that ha all custodian UN agency has taken is that we involve countries' experts, especially the national statistical offices and Ministry of Agriculture. Um, they were involved, you know, in these discussions throughout a different stages of the methodological development process. And then, you know, we were regularly you know, providing feedback to the IAEG SDG or Interagency Expert Group on Sustainable Development Goals at, at various milestones. And then we would be receiving feedback from the IAEG SDG, including the feedback from the National Statistical Offices and, 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 and other experts we provided all that feedback and then resubmitted to IAEG SDG uh, for their the approval and endorsement. So just to mention, the SDG 241 was initially submitted for uh, approval and endorsement in November 2017. But the IAEG SDG group back then told us that no, you need to further test the methods and you need to you know, incorporate uh, the feedback of, uh, of the group before the, uh, they, they, they may consider it for, for final endorsement. So we went back to the drawing board, we conducted the tests, which I spoke about as part of my presentation, and we went back to IAEG SDG, which then in November 2018, uh, approved and endorsed the methodology of SDG 241. Now, uh, in, in a, in, but, the, but the process didn't stop there. In, in, in November 2018, the methodology was approved conditional on the fact that there were few concerns raised by selected countries around the biodiversity sub-indicator. Uh, and they wanted us to revise some criteria that we selected back then as part of that version of the methodology. So we came back and then in early, 2000, um, early 2019, we constituted this informal group of countries, which was led by Canada and which included, by the way, Russian Federation as well as, as, as one of its member. And then, you know, we, we uh, started um, um, discussion with this informal group and we told them that you come up with uh, with an alternative criteria for biodiversity sub indicator and we will discuss and then if we reach a, a consensus uh, solution then we will resubmit it to ieg SDG. and that's exactly what happened so the group came up with the ui's criteria for uh, for the biodiversity sub indicator and then we resubmitted these refinements to the IAEG SDG in November 2019, whereby the logic of SDG 241. So, in a nutshell, to cut it short, the methodology has been through a process. So, it was not that FAO on its own was leading and driving the process, but in fact, the, the countries were, were more in control of the methodology of SDG 241. Um, before uh, before we submit to IAEG SDG for its approval. And just one more point that I would like to emphasize, that the current methodology, which is around the farm survey approach, this was also on, on request from several countries uh, who mentioned to us that basically um, combining information from different data sources um, may be too challenging for them. So come up with a simple approach whereby we use one single data collection tool for us to collect information on all the 11 sub indicators of 241. And hence, you know, the, the, the methodological note of 241 currently reflects that. But having said that, there, there were other countries too who mentioned that we would still like to use alternative data sources. And now we have started working on that line as well. So, so next steps, of course, we don't stop here. It's uh, not that we have conducted this uh, tr virtual training 
and uh, we stop our collaboration uh, with your respective countries this point onward. No, we, we would like to build uh, build on this training um, and, uh, you know, we will ultimately our aim will be that uh, your country is able to um, basically implement the SCG 241 framework at the country level. Now, obviously, our first and topmost priority is to help you enhance uh, uh, your uh, policy, national policy making and decision making at the country level. So that's our topmost priority because that's what matters. I mean, SDG 241 monitoring is important, but that came come as a secondary objective. So um, as I mentioned um, uh, a short while ago, uh, we would share with you the stock taking uh, Excel sheet. Uh, it's a sheet that can consist of uh, the key um, variables, data items uh, of SCG241. Um, this will help you assess the data gaps uh, in your current agriculture statistical systems where vis-a-vis -vis the data requirements of SCG241. So this is the very first step which I've been emphasizing um, time and again. We would also request you to respond to the FAO 2020 data collection questionnaire by filling it in using the available data. Um, the due date for, for this questionnaire was set at 30th of September. Um, we are going to be sending reminders as part of our standard uh, procedure to all member states that haven't replied as of yet, hopefully by tomorrow. So if you come across this questionnaire, I mean, feel free to add as much information which is available. Um, it's perfectly all right. I mean, if you, even if you have information on one sub-indicator available for the time being, even that is a good starting point um, as we um, will, um, you know, together move towards uh, 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 making sure that, you know, in the, in the next couple of years, your country will be able to report on the entire dashboard. Um, we would also like you to prepare a two or three page action plan um, that details the implementation of and reporting on SCG 241. So the questions that I showed you on the previous slide will help you draw an elaborate document. What we need from you is maybe simple one page or two page in two or three paragraphs. Uh, outlining, uh, you know, the constraints that we just discussed with a few countries um, that inhibit reporting on the entire dash dashboard, and then what action uh, would you take and by when for your countries to be able to collect data on SE 241 and report it back to FAO. In, the, in that same action plan, in one paragraph, you can also request for, uh, for further technical assistance, and it will be very helpful for us because we are now in process of organizing ourselves for the next year in terms of our work plan. So uh, if you can um, share your uh, um, insights with us in terms of uh, your plans, then that will be very good because we will start incorporating uh, those activities in our, uh, in our plan for the, for the next year. And with this, uh, I thank uh, all of you, uh, all the participants. Um, uh, I really uh, enjoyed, uh, you know, delivering uh, this uh, training to such a dynamic and uh, active uh, group. Um, we, we are hoping that we will carry forward this relationship that we have built with you over the past three days um, into, into, the, into the future with the ultimate aim, of course, uh, to, to make sure that uh, your country is SCG241 ready. And uh, plus in the process, I mean, uh, uh, the ultimate goal is obviously to, to improve your agriculture statistical system so that you can make uh, more informed and uh, appropriate uh, and adequate policies and decision making at, at the country. So thank you very much. Don't hesitate to write to us using this, uh, the, the email address scg241-indicator at fao.org if you have any further questions, comments, feedback that you would like to give us. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Spanjar. Before closing, I would like to ask for the last 
uh, uh, well, this time it's not a quiz, this time it's a, an evaluation. So now that we are at the end of this uh, three days training, uh, we kindly request you to evaluate this course. Uh, remember, it's always anonymously, so you should fill uh, this uh, online evaluation form that is displayed now. So please answer each question for, uh, to the best of your ability. We will use this feedback to improve uh, the structure and the organization of the course for future trainings. So please be reminded that the main goal uh, of this course was to help you gain a clear understanding of the SDG indicator and its uh, methodology. So I leave now the floor to the translators. Uh, thank you, Stefania and uh, Shvendi Arkhan for uh, having this uh, lovely training. It really was uh, fruitful and um, it was a great opportunity to get to know what all the other uh, neighboring countries are doing as well as um, those not neighboring to us but within the same region. So just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody and uh, hoping to collaborate a lot more um, at uh, better and greater events, inshallah. Uh, so thank you very much.
Thank you, Mrs. Leia. Uh, I think the translators have finished to translate the questions. Uh, I leave uh, still a few seconds, please, for you to, to answer the questions. So maybe Aspandia, you want to uh, stop sharing the screen. Maybe we can switch on the video now. So I leave uh, uh, the questionnaire open on the background. So in case someone uh, didn't reply yet, uh, they still have time. Um, I think it's now to officially close this third round of the virtual training on the SDG 241. I would like to thank officially the translators, Egor and Senya. They have done a great job and translated everything very professionally and carefully. And I think I can thank Aspandiar on behalf of all the participants. We are receiving uh, a lot of uh, uh, nice messages, so thank you all. Uh, the, um, okay, wait, let me close the evaluation. Okay. I close the evaluation. Okay, so I was saying, uh, so Aspandia, we are getting a lot of messages. So the training was carried out uh, in a perfect way. So I thank you on behalf of the participants. Uh, the questions uh, were answered uh, with passion and comprehensively. Uh, and so last but not least, I would like to, I would like to thank all of you for having participated to this uh, third round of the virtual training. We hope you have enjoyed it and that you have helped you, we have helped you to gain a clear understanding of the methodology on the SDG uh, 241 indicator. In the end, uh, these extraordinary circumstances with the pandemic allowed us to train more than 60 participants and considering also the first two, two rounds of the virtual training, we have trained almost 300 participants. So this is really a success. And this is for sure something that would have been very hard to achieve with an in-person training. Uh, please remember that you are more than welcome to contact us anytime through the, our SDG email account, as Aspandia showed more than once. As promised, we will send the certificate of attendance to all participants that were connected for the three days. And we will also share the recording and the final report of this training. Uh, I leave the floor to Aspandiar for the last closure, but in the meantime, I ask you if you wish to switch on the, the video and I take a photo of all of us together and while Aspandiar is, uh, is talking. So, Espanyar, you have the floor. So, again, uh, thank you very much, Stefania. Um, uh, uh, I would, uh, you know, let, let, me, let me say by, uh, let me close by saying this, that it was a real pleasure to get to uh, train all of you. Uh, of course, as I mentioned earlier, our collaboration with your countries doesn't stop here. Uh, we would definitely like uh, to um, engage more with you and um, you know help you adopt uh, not only SDG 241 but if you have questions related to other SDGs under FAO mandate don't hesitate to write to us we will put you in touch with the with the right team within FAO um, one one thing which I would like to emphasize is actually the the action plan, the two pager or the one pager, uh, it's really a key for us. So please uh, uh, send us back your action plan uh, and maybe we will highlight the deadline for submitting the action plan in our email to you today. But it would be, it would really help us understand as to where you stand in terms of the, of SDG 241 so that uh, we can we can help you in a, in a more better and Way. So with this, uh, with these words, uh, thank you again. And I would request all of you, if possibly, if you can turn on your uh, 
webcam so that we can we can take this uh, group photo which we of course we will share with you soon after as part of our email communication so thank you very much thank you thanks a lot спасибо вам огромное за прекрасно организованный семинар и доведение информации это из россии Thank you again. So I'm making another picture now. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you again, everybody. Have a nice rest of your day. Have a nice evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, bye, -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.